They were known as the Mersey Millionaires and in seven years won two league titles and an FA Cup. They broke transfer records and under the backing of the incredibly wealthy Moores family became a formidable force in English football. When Everton won the league title in 1970, a glittering future seemed assured for this exciting young team. Somehow, it never quite happened. Harry Catterick had built his second great team as Everton manager and they won this title by a staggering nine points. Even as Bill Shankly was reviving the Reds, the Toffees were still very much regarded as the biggest team in Liverpool. And the style in which they won this title will never be forgotten. An impregnable defence, the holy trinity of Ball, Harvey and Kendall controlling midfield and Royal and Whittle scoring the goals. It's still regarded today as possibly the best Everton team of all time. Joining me to share just some of the memories from those Goodison glory days include our first guest who made his debut for Everton in a European Cup game against Inter at the San Siro at the age of 18. Born in Liverpool, Colin Harvey spent 12 seasons at Goodison, was known as the White Pele to the Everton fans. He played 384 games, scoring 24 goals, and he went on to both coach and manage at the club and was instrumental in the development of Wayne Rooney. Along with Colin and the late great Alan Ball, my next guest was the third part of that holy trinity in the famous midfield. As a Preston player, he became the youngest ever player in an FA Cup final in 1964. Howard Kendall joined Everton in 1967 for £80,000. Originally more of a defender, Catterick moved his man into the middle of the park and later made him captain of the team. He also became their manager in 1981 and led Everton to unprecedented success both here and for the first time he conquered Europe in the Cup Winners' Cup. It was the first of three spells as manager. Our next guest was the youngest Everton player to make his debut for them back in 1966 at the age of just 16 and he celebrated his 21st birthday as Everton became champions. Joe Royal attended the Quarry Bank High School in Liverpool where he was an exceptional all-round sportsman. Unusually for a grammar school boy, he played for Liverpool schools. A number of clubs were interested in his signature, including Manchester United. But he went on to make 270 appearances for Everton, scoring 119 times. He also had a spell as manager, leading them to an FA Cup final victory in 1995. Of course, fellas, the title was won under Harry Catterick. What sort of man was he, Colin? He had a reputation of being a bit ruthless, didn't he? I think ruthless, austere, detached, cool, all those things. But still, at the end of the day, he was a fantastic manager. I mean, uh, he actually gave me my debut, as you mentioned before, when I was 18. And I've nothing but praise for him. I mean, I always found it a little bit annoying that the fact that, you know, that at that era there was the talk of Nicholson and Busby and Shankly and Revy and his record almost stood up to theirs. And because I think he didn't court the press as such, he obviously didn't get the, uh, the recognition that they did. You were just a young boy, Joe, weren't you? I mean, was it a case of speaking when you were spoken to? Oh, very, very much so. When I made my debut, I, I was cleaning the boots for the game of Blackpool the next day. And uh, I got a call off the, the youth team coach at the time, Ron Lewin, and he said to me, uh, the manager wants to see you in his office. And the first thought was, what have I done wrong? You know, I took my overall off and um, put the boots down and went up to his office, waited outside, got called in, and uh, he said... Um, Sit down, he said, if the weather doesn't change too much, you'll be making your debut tomorrow. And he said, I've got your father on the phone now, there, there might be a, one or two pressmen after you because uh, Alex Young's not playing. And then when I got home, of course, the road was full. You know, you never saw too many cars on our road at that stage and uh, just couldn't get near the house. Mm -hmm. Because Alex Young was not playing, you know, with God to the Everton fans. But Harry Cassie was always very fair to me, he, he was hard. You know, there, there were numerous occasions and examples of his, his disciplinary regime. But the fact that three of us have gone on to manage Everton tells you that he instilled good principles in us. But you didn't see too much of him, did you, Howard, on the training ground? He wasn't a tracksuit manager. The only time you saw him on the training ground with a tracksuit on was either the directors were calling in to see him or, <laughs> or the TV cameras were <laughs> going to be there. Uh, they, they were the only times you saw him with the, with the tracksuit on. Mm. And he used to come in in the, uh, in the team meetings on a Friday. Um, Wolf Dixon, the trainer, um, was conducting the the pre the pre match uh, chat, and Harry would come in with the opposing team and pass it over to Wolf, and then walk out, and that was his contribution. He'd found out the opposition, what the team was going to be the following day. Yeah. And he never wanted to give away 
the Everton team, did he? Uh, was it true that he used to just name them in alphabetical order so he didn't give away any sort of oh, system? He, he had some strange systems. I mean, I remember once we were playing at Leeds. And oh. Do you remember Leeds? Yeah. He didn't have a toilet in the dressing room, so he had to go out the dressing room to the toilet and then come back in. And the press are all there waiting for the day of the team and everything else. And lads were going out with their arms strapped up. Gordon West, the goalkeeper, was I don't think I'll make it today, lads. And he's got this, his <laughs> arms strapped up and the, the others were limping out because he hadn't given them the team and they, they somehow had managed to get outside the dressing room door <laughs> and the lads just kept going across with different excuses. They go, who's playing? Well, I'm not playing. Yeah. I've got my arms strapped up yeah. and the goalkeeper, aren't I? Think, like, There's no way I'm going to be playing. I think Lavi went out with a goalkeeping jersey. On yeah, it was just... <laughs> just I mean, it was our way wide than them up, but I mean, it was just the fact that I think you had up till quarters of an hour before kickoff mm -hmm. at that stage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he waited till the very, very last second to do it. And uh, it could be but a But we, we never knew if we were playing. I mean, how you found out if you're in the team, the, the squad would go up on a Friday, mm -hmm. and then you'd arrive and see if your boots were under the shirt. That's yeah, what you found yeah, out initially yeah. if you were playing, you know, where's my boots? Me? Oh yeah, boots are there, you know, so I'm playing today. And it, it was, it was kind of, he, I think he had a mistrust of people. He had great principles about football, all his football insides were, you know, they, they passed the ball and played. But I, I just don't think he trusted players, did he? He didn't, no. I mean, one thing he did do as well, I mean, he, he never ever told you he had a good game, did he? No. If he helped you off with your shirt, you thought, oh, I did all right today. You know, <laughs> yeah, you were yeah. taking your shirt off and you go, come yeah. here, son. And he helped me off. I thought, must have done yeah. all right today. <laughs> that was about as good. He didn't like telling you you'd done well. And he, if, if he did, he thought, well, you're in the team next week. And he didn't like telling you that. So, But, I mean, as Joe just mentioned, his principles were top on. He liked his teams to play football. Yeah. Very innovative as well. I mean, we, yeah. we were playing five in midfield because there was us three two wide men and Joe up front on his own and that, you're going back to the 60s aren't you which was unheard of. We were playing like Chelsea, we, yeah. we were playing the Chelsea we, system yeah. before Chelsea, you know, way before and, and he recognised players, he'd got Howard in, yeah. Colin had come through, Borley had signed in 66 after the World Cup <coughs> and to accommodate those three in the same side which had to be done, tighten the midfield and, and split a striker and a winger, you know, it, it was... I would always tell I a good, good story about his scouting system. What was your scouting system called? The one where, <laughs> the one where he, go on, you. With Harry Cook? Harry Cook discovered Bowley playing in the World Cup final. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. Um, Harry Cook was a, a great chief scout. Yeah. And um, we used to, to rib him in the fact that he spotted Alan Ball playing in the World Cup final. <laughs> <laughs> he was that good a scout. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, 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 but the discipline was high, Jeff. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, we, we had somebody standing at the gate, one of the coaches was standing at the gate with the register, and if you're an apprentice, you had to sign in by nine o'clock, and you might be 50 yards away, and as soon as that watch hit nine o'clock, the book was closed and you no, were late. The, the, pen, the pencil disappeared, and the red pen went... The red pen the, came red pen, out. And you had to sign in in red to show you were late. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they, and then the, that would go upstairs, because he was at his office, like, and they, all the coaches had to go and meet him before training to say what they were going to do and everything else, and then... Uh, where's the book? Oh, he was late. That's a fine scene. It, just because it was in red, he didn't have to bother having to look at times or anything. It was just there and done. What you learned from him, when you, when you went into management, I think one of the basic rules he had was he bought a balance. Yeah. He didn't just buy players. No. He had money to spend, but he didn't just go out there and just spend it on, on individual players. He bought players to fit into a pattern, into a balance for a team. And in all fairness, he did that twice, didn't he? To yeah. win championships. Mm -hmm. How did he feel about Shankly's success uh, across the road? They didn't like each other. They, they quite, uh, and it was across the road in case of Shanks. Shanks' back garden backed onto our training ground, and Shanks used to go on every Sunday with his dog to pee on the to place. Leave itself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know the, the groundsman, you know the, the little groundsman there, Dougie, had, uh, Dougie or said would come and tell us how Shanks was in yesterday. You know. He was telling us he's been. We, we found out more news off the groundsman. They knew what was going on from, yeah. from uh, at Everton than anybody, you know. And he came up to me one day, said, and he said, um, Shanks was in uh, yesterday, you know, he came in to see Harry. I said, yeah. He said, yeah, he, he tried to buy you or David Johnson. Oh, yeah, well, we'd, ne we'd never hear anything about that, you know. And, uh, but they just didn't like each other. They just didn't get on at all. They, they, were, well, they were chalk and cheese. Chalk and one cheese. One was an extrovert, yeah. one was a complete introvert, you know. I mean, but both knew how to ba balance teams and Shanks didn't, couldn't get him off the field and Harry, unless the cameras were there, yeah. you couldn't get him on the field. Yeah. So it was, but he, he knew how to 
well the team and he did do it several times and changed it and got rid of great players you mentioned Alec Young yeah. and Roy Vernon and Jimmy Gabriel and uh, I played in the 66 cup final by the time we won the league in 70 I think there was four of us left from the team you know it, it changed it completely Howard yeah. had come in Bowley had come in Joe had, Jimmy Husband Alan Whittle all these you know he, he knew players and he knew how to balance teams without doubt yeah. selection mm. and delegation yeah that was they were the two things yeah I mean, Liverpool had made big strides by then, hadn't they, Howard? So the rivalry yeah. within the city yeah. must have been an absolute fever pitch. Well, it was, it was tremendous, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, when, we, when you, you say you win a cup, um, it's great, but you're not the best, you're not necessarily the best team in the league. And, um, you know, the proof well, thanks, is... Yeah. Sorry? Thanks. All right. We won no the cup. Yeah. yeah, well done, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not automatically the best team in the league. If you win the championship, then you can honestly say, hold your hands up, we are the best. Mm. And the way you won the title that season, which obviously we're going to talk about in some depth, it wasn't just the fact that you won it and you won it by a street. It was the fact, I mean, people were saying that you were playing total football ahead of its time. I think, I think we, we started playing the season before. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it started to flow. You know, the, the, you could see the balance, you could see the threat. Um, we lost the semi-final to Manchester City. Um, but I think we finished third or fourth in the league and we then grew in confidence and uh, the following season, well, there was nothing stopping us. Mm. Going into that season, Joe, can you remember, was the feeling around the club that, that this could be a special yeah. season? Yeah, we were the live outsiders, people were talking that, OK, be it the press or the people who knew in the game were saying, hey, you know, this side's coming. Evertonians who've seen the sides through would tell you that in 60, 68, 69, actually at times played better football than 69, 70. But we played great football and, and we turned into a winning machine. You know, we, we won games, we, we could dig games out. Uh, Lid Bawley, bless him, God bless him, used to say, if you want to play football against us, we'll play you. If you want to battle us, we'll battle you. If you want to kick us, we'll kick you. Yeah. And uh, we all mess <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, there, there was one particular instance when you talk about balance and players themselves taking responsibility and are just gelling. There was one training, in, uh, training session that um, it happened, Wolf Dixon was the trainer and he got us all out there and what we, we hated doing was shadow play in training and he says right we're doing a little bit of shadow play this morning. Um, Gordon West I want you to lay the ball out to uh, Ray Wilson. Ray Wilson I want you to pass it to Johnny Morrissey. Johnny Morrissey I want you to play it inside to Colin Harvey now then, Jimmy Husband, I want you to fly across from the wing to join in with Joe Royal. And Howard, I want you to go around the right-hand side. And we just said, but we do that, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> He'd seen it in, yeah. in, in the matches. Yeah. That, was, that was one of our moves. We, we, we <laughs> were practicing it when, uh, it was, what it was, a lot of clubs man Mark, so if Jimmy Husband made a run and the fullback went with him, Howard automatically went like that, and I played it, played it into him. So some teams, they didn't do it. They stayed with, if Jimmy Osman made a run, they let him go on to the centre half and there was no hole for no, you to go no. into. So we didn't do it. So on this, on this Monday go, you went through doing that move that I've, I've told you to do. And he, and we'd sort of gelled it between ourselves, yeah, yeah, hadn't yeah, we? Yeah, and, yeah. and he just said, well, you're not doing it properly. Like, we'll work on it. Well, the full-back stayed in the hole. I couldn't do it. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Well, in this training session, he's got to go with Jimmy. And Howard, when you go round, <laughs> Colin, give it. <laughs> All right, Will. Yeah, we yeah. do that. <laughs> But we ran, oh. but we ran. When people people say to us now, you know, our, our modern team's so much fitter than nobody was fitter than us. We ran. Let's talk with some of the players. I mean, let's start with the Holy Trinity, if you like. You know, yourself and Howard and, and Alan Ball. Did it gel straight away, Howard? Uh, I took a little bit of time to settle in. I'd not played in the in the first division. Um, you know, Colin was already established. I mean, Borley had won a World Cup winner's medal, so I mean, naturally, he was he was in there and he he settled in because he signed in the summer and I went I went to Everton in the um, on the deadline day of the same season. But um, there's an interesting it, story about that, wasn't there? Because wasn't it when when Harry Catrick signed you, he actually said that he'd lost you and you were going to Liverpool instead, and, and then well, a couple of hours later <coughs> said, "Here he is, he's our player." Well, I, I think all the all the press were were talking about me joining Liverpool and uh, 
when Jimmy Milne, the, the manager of Preston, came knocking on the door, my father went to the door and uh, Jimmy Milne said that we've got a club for your lad. And he said, Liverpool. And he went, no, it's across the park. And Harry Catrick and Harry Cooper were waiting at, uh, at Deep Dale to talk to me. So I, uh, there was a story, yeah, and I believe it was correct, that uh, Shankly offered his resignation. Mm. Um, yeah, put Col his resignation in Col the Col drawer. Tells that story, yeah, he does yeah, tell yeah, the story, yeah. yeah. Okay. Which is a, a, a great compliment. Yeah. Um, uh, such a great man and great yeah. manager uh, feels so strongly about Two losing out. Managers after you, won't it? Two great managers after you. Yeah, well, yeah. But you played a lot of your career, a lot of your career, not all of it, but uh, as a defender, more of a defender. Uh, no, not Preston, really. No, not really. I think. Um, when wink you talk off. about now, mm -hmm. wink yeah. off an old yeah. wink off. When, you, when you talk about now being mi midfield players, being attacking midfield players or defensive midfield players, I think I prided myself possibly on being half and half. You know, where you, I wasn't a great attacking player, I could get forward, but I think maybe, you know, the defensive side was more, um, more in my makeup, and the attacking player was certainly Bawley and was probably Cullen as well. You know, but we, we, we tended to, to try and do both, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, as much as we possibly could. Just and to, just to go to kill the myth before I go, as Brian LeBowen, the great late Brian LeBowen used to say, it's the only three-man team ever to win the championship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he came in, he was upset one morning, wasn't oh, he? Oh, really upset. Headlines in the newspapers, Los Tres, Los Tres Magnificos. Yeah. And it upset him. Oh, it upset him, man. The only three-man team ever to win the championship. Yeah, yeah. 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 When, when did you first get started call, being called the Holy Trinity? You, you were I, 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 I honestly can't remember. Yeah. It was, I think it was a little bit it's later on. You it know, came later. Evertonians of that era were sort of fair back because you know everyone was saying oh this is the best midfield ever and they go no that's the best and then it just suddenly developed to the holy trinity and uh, in fact i got a fantastic folks here know the ones we did do yeah well like someone done me there uh, jimmy martin found to know one and did it all off for me and it's fantastic just the three it's one of the few photographs of us ever oh, taken i think you just got a goal as the three of us together and there was only so they did so many signed copies didn't they and they were, they were lettered and but it was it was just, a, I think it was a bit of a, a myth that grew up afterwards, Jeff. I thought it was used at yeah, the time. Because yeah. you were an old hand by then, weren't you? But, oh, you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> you, you just take it back a few years. I mean, what was that debut like in the San Siro? Same as Joe just said before, it was one of them. Uh, uh, I'd gone over, and there were three young lads had gone over where, to help out. Uh, a lad called Barry Rees, another uh, Roy Parnell, and myself. And we were just carrying the skips all the time, you know. Well, so the, the, when, the Wednesday came, and we just sat there. And we knew Jimmy Gable was... Uh, injured, so he uh, just team meeting, and it was very, very simple. He just went uh, right this evening. Um, Dennis Stevens, you drop back to number four, and Colin, you were number eight. So it was just like, <laughs> 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 well, so uh, go, go to bed. He kept the pressure off me completely, like no. And all I thought was, no one's expecting anything. I went, no, I did okay, you know. But considering like it's the European Cup and you're making your debut, as a and in the San Stereo as well, like, you know, it was unbelievable. But he just kept the pressure off me completely and uh, kept it very low key, as Joe just said before, with his debut. You know, just, just spin, yeah, it was spin. It wasn't until the next day after the game where I realised how important it had been, you know. And they went on to win the, the European Cup for the next two years. Fantastic, what a way to start. Uh, uh, what about the impact Joe Allen Ball arriving at the club? I mean, you know. <coughs> Fantastic. I mean, uh, for the start, he came as a World Cup winner. Um, great personality, a fantastic player. I mean, an, an amazing player. Considering he actually analysed his talents, uh, he certainly wasn't the quickest player in the team. He, he might have been the slowest over 10 yards. Uh, the, he had no great left foot on him and didn't head the ball. But to tell you what, what fantastic energy, great finisher, and a great knowledge for the game, great first touch, and just never stopped. He, he was world class. You know, in an era that was just changing, you know, the, the, you had to have midfield players who could run. You don't have, you couldn't have midfield players who stood around anymore. You know, just hoping the ball came to them. All of a sudden, it was a high energy game, and ball he was right up there, and um, he, he he was great spirit for the club. I remember we turned up at Southampton, when Southampton had a very physical side. I think it's not long after Shanks had called them an alehouse team or something like that, and they had been unbeaten at home in a long, long time, and. Uh, Ball, he stood up, we, we put the cards down, you know, we always played cards on the way and put the cards down, he said, come on, how many are we going to put past this lot today, you know, and we put five past them. Five you know, two, five, five two. Five two it was, yeah, and yeah. Jimmy Husband was too quick for them and we ran all over them and that was in, in this team evolving, I'm sure that was the season before we won the championship actually. I mean, without a doubt, I mean, he's the best player I 
ever played with. He was absolutely tremendous. Um, so much enthusiasm and every game, wasn't it, Colin? Yeah. You know, yeah. every game. But after we won the championship, I always remember one particular day. I think he was nearing the end. I think he was one, not wanting to go, but I think Cat was thinking, and the Cat was thinking, possibly it's about time. Cap thought, the, he, the the Cap right thought he wanted to go. Yeah. Because Borley always said, you know, yeah. he said, I never wanted to I leave. Know, yeah. But he, we were having a practice match, and uh, Borley was just sulking and just jogging around. And after having win, won the championship, we're out there, and Wolf Dixon stopped the play and went up to Alan. Alan, what's wrong with you? And Borley went, how can I play with this lot? Ha! <laughs> we just won the championship. <laughs> <laughs> Was Harry Catrick aware, by the way, that you, you call him the cat or cat? Well, daubed on the garage door at Belfield, the training ground, was beware of the cat, not the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and that was true, that. Yeah. <laughs>beat Liverpool you've got a Tommy Smith's place to celebrate was it yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we like that you know then Tom was great no, Tom was good company yeah he was good company and uh, yeah, he, we always got on he well. growled I mean, at you at the door oh you know. we'd have made her on the field but afterwards uh, you better come down. in you better yeah. come on right yeah. yeah what about young Joe Royal then because you mentioned that you were stepping you know initially in uh, Alex Young's boots yeah you know now he was a legend, wasn't he? How did people see you at first? <coughs> I, I was a, a, obviously a different player to Alex Young. I'd seen Alex Young make his debut on the terraces. I used to stand on the paddock at, at Goodison and saw this idol, you know, this blonde idol, white blonde with marvellous poise and balance. And there was I, a gangly 16-year-old kid with terminal acne. And I was stepping in for... You know what was termed as God on Merseyside, and uh, I was a different kind of player. I'd actually joined Everton as an old-fashioned wing half, you know, which was a combination of midfield player and, and even centre half at times. As a kid, played more as a centre half, but Everton, you know, Harry Catrick had said to me, "You're too big to play in there, so you're going to be a striker." So they'd started working on me as a striker, but I played alongside Fred Pickering that day as an old-fashioned up and down fetch and carry <coughs> midfield player, mm -hmm. and. Uh, if I touched the ball six times, that was about it. You know, the game just flew past me. We lost 2-0. And woke up the next day to see the papers. Uh, Harry Catrick kicked by thugs. And he was never kicked. He might have been jostled by Everton fans, upset over Borley playing. But instead of reading about Everton losing at Blackpool, they all read about Harry Catrick being kicked by thugs. Mm. And he was very clever that way. You know, for somebody who didn't get on with the press, he manipulated them quite well. And the, the, the press didn't like him. I think that we, the year we won the league, he didn't get manager of the year, which he should have done. And there's not many cases where the, the man who wins the, the league doesn't get it. And it was just because of his personal relationships with the press at the time. How I had, you a, I'd had a, um, an injury in the early part of the season, the 69-70 the, the season. And they couldn't find out the problem. It, it turned out to be a hairline fracture. The callus was forming. And... Uh, it was a week before the semi-final at, at uh, Villa Park against Man City and I was asked by one of the press, there was a reserve game on the Tuesday, what do you think, will he be having a run out? And I says, oh yeah, I would, I would have thought the manager would want me to have a run out and test the leg. Um, he called me in his office, Kendall demands reserve team spot. So he called me in his office and he said, is that true? I said, no, I said, I wasn't <laughs> demanding, I was not, not to you, sir, <laughs> you know, and he said, uh, no, I'm not happy with that, he says, I'm fining you, so he played me at, uh, at Villa Park, I had to come off just after half time, um, and he took me to the nursing home that night, in his car, um, because I mean, I was, in, I was in a little bit of trouble, and he said, I'm not fining you, by the way, and I said, uh, oh, thank you. He says, no, but he says, uh, he says, you didn't see any of Bawley's quotes in the paper this week, did you? After you going down the dressing room and saying, you, you know, I was going to be fined. So I, told, I passed that information on to all the lads. Yeah. And Bawley was not quoted all week. <laughs> <laughs> Very clever man. Oh, he was nobody's fool. No, I, I think he was fair. You know, he, he ran it like a boot camp at times. But I think, I, I remember coming back from London one night and we, we'd had a bad performance or, or probably lost a game. And we all got back and Wilf Dixon came up the coach, you know, uh, everybody in the, 
dressing room and we thought we were going to get a dressing down an old fashioned rollicking at the time. And when we got in there, and this was late on at night, started handing kit out. We trained. At what time? Switched the lights on. Whatever time we got back from London, switched the lights yeah. on and we all went into the indoor gymnasium and trained. Should yeah. think so as well after that, <laughs> after <laughs> bad performance. Isn't it? Should be getting away with things like that. Yeah. When I look at the side now, and of course I'm you know, very familiar with a lot of the names and the Kendalls and the Royals and the Harveys and the Balls crop up all the time. But, you know, there were a lot of unsung sort of heroes in that side, weren't there? Oh, John Hurst played every game. Yeah. 42 games. You know, n um, nobody the, ever seems to mention one of the likes of John Hurst. Well. as a schoolboy striker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he played for England schoolboys as, yeah. as a striker. Two years on the run. Yeah. Two years on the run, yeah. And then I mean, he, the other one who doesn't get a mention as well, and we just talked about him on the train on the way down, was Johnny Morrissey. Yeah. Who was a fantastic player. He was first picking five of sides every game. Unlike a lot of wingers I played with later on in my career, I knew when the ball was coming from Johnny. Yeah. He didn't mess around, he opened himself out and the ball came in and I scored a lot of goals from, from Johnny Morrissey's crosses he, and uh, probably the first ever winger to frighten fullbacks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know in the old days when they used to say, you know, give him one early on to the, the fullbacks and that, uh, nobody messed with Johnny, believe me. We didn't even mess with him in training. No, no. I was told by Bowley after I signed, he said, I've got one piece of advice for you. He said, don't take the ball off Johnny Morrissey in training. <laughs> and uh, we knew do why. That anyway, because he, he was a good dribbler, yeah, wasn't he? Was he, he, was high, yeah. he was high up on yeah. uh, Jack Charlton's blacklist, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, on his black book. Yeah. You know, because, Jack's uh, famous uh, black, black book with yeah, yeah, the people yeah. he was going to get and one he wasn't going to get. And whatever they did, none of them got Johnny. <laughs> it was the no. other way around. Oh, Johnny. But he was, I mean, as you say, just to go back to the old Sun Heroes, and I mean, Tommy Wright, right back, was probably one of the best right backs ever to play for Everton and play for England any number of times and John Hurst we touched on before and uh, Jimmy a Hulston, goalkeeper, haven't you, in Gordon Jimmy Hulston yeah, yeah, yeah. and oh, also Alan Whitley who had a, a fantastic mm. goal scoring run to, on the run into the who, who scored have, numerous goals for have us. Have we missed out the other World Cup winner? Uh, oh the left back, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Wilson as well who's another yeah. World Cup winner yeah. and St Sandy Brown who stood in for yeah. quite a number of times yeah. as well. So and, and, and the season we're talking about, 69 to 70, he played seven games in the first 20 days. Oh, yeah. you know, so, yeah. Yeah. And, and the first two of them, of course, were against Arsenal and Manchester United away, and he won them both. Yes. And suddenly, from being lively outsiders, we were, uh, I guess people uh, were looking yeah, at you. Yeah, yeah, you're right as well. That was such a statement. Mm -hmm. And I think Hursty, well, I know Hursty was leading goalscorer. John Hurst, you mentioned on this. Mm -hmm. Every time I see him, he reminds me of when he was leading goalscorer <laughs> Everton for two games because yeah. he, he yeah. scored at Arsenal, the winner, and then at Old Trafford. Set pieces. I mean, you should call him the magnet, didn't he? He just, well, the ball he went, just to him, didn't it? Yeah. went to him, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. He, had a, he had this sense of yeah. where the ball was well, allowed. Strike, it being a striker, being a striker, striker as a kid, yeah. he kept his, his intuition with where to go when the That's ball right. was dropping and That's all right. that, and he, he still, still kept it. That's right. Mm. I mean, I mentioned those seven games. I think the seventh of those seven games was against Leeds at, at Goodison, and Leeds were the champions from the year before, and they hadn't lost in 34 games. Yeah. You know, and, and you've gone three, I think you scored a couple, didn't you, Joe? Yeah. You know, how, how pivotal was, was that game in the season? I think when we went 3-0 up, we, we thought we'd done it and we switched off a little bit and they got two later on. Yeah. And I remember being particularly brave that game, and not particularly against Jack Charlton or um, Norman Hunter, but Westy didn't come for a cross and I gave him a rollicking. Although it doesn't come much braver than that, you know. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> we're on the halfway line. Of the <laughs> that was well away yeah, from yeah, him. Yeah, he, yeah, he was yeah, tough, yeah, was he, yeah, Gordon yeah. West? He no, he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't like criticism, put it like that off, Jeff. No, <laughs> didn't take Carly to criticism. <laughs> didn't mess with West. The ball always did something. It never went straight in the net, did it? it but they were ruthless went up and down. Leads, weren't they? Oh, they, yeah. They were ruthless. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you, if, you, if you miss Giles, then you got Hunter. You know, and, and Bremner was following up, and Big Jack, and yeah. I mean, they, they, they were ruthless. Every one of them. Yeah, yeah they were ruthless. But I mean, we, we played for the first hour or so in that game, we were fantastic. Yeah. Probably as well, and as you say, they hadn't lost for 30 odd games, and we just completely paid them off the park, and the next minute we're 3 0 up, and it, it was a doddle, as Joe said, we switched off a little bit, and they got yeah. two late ones, but I mean, that was a statement beating them three. Two, beating them three. They never got the appreciation that they should have had because of the other side, because they were a terrific football inside oh, as yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, everybody know that, knew that Giles, Ian and Bremner could look after themselves, and Norman, I mean, I played with Norman for three years at Bristol City, and if I tell you the first word I'd talk about Norman Hunter would not be hard, but skillful, what, what a left foot he had, yeah. a joy to play with as a, as a front player, Terry Cooper, Brilliant left back, you know. So he'd say sorry after you'd done you as well, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah, very polite. Very polite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the feeling in the city like more? 
you know, when, when Leeds have gone back to the top and you've hit this sort of in, indifferent spell, do people think, well, that was that, you know, it was going to be second, third, fourth, something like that? No, I think that you always feel that um, you can't keep going all season with the, the performances and results uh, so consistent. I think that um, we had our little hiccup, but we didn't, we didn't believe it was going to continue. Uh, we always believed we were going to get back into it. I, I think you mentioned in the eight-game lull, mm. as you called it, we'd lost at home to Liverpool 3-0 when Sandy had scored that famous own goal, you know, the best own goal of all time. And um, in the running, then we went to Anfield and we knew that even if we won the league and lost twice to Liverpool, mm. then it would still be slightly undervalued, certainly by the red half of the, the city. But we won 2-0 there uh, mm. and uh, I think then everybody grew the chess came out and everybody grew a little bit you know i think Leeds we can the do destruction this. of europe as well didn't they? they they did but i mean we still won with record oh points. yeah 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 just just tell us about the own goal of course oh. sandy rocketed one and he, he dived it across and um he's facing his own goal obviously and we all thought well he's going to put it out for a corner but sandy had other ideas he found the stanchion <laughs> john olorisa scored one something similar last season Crossed from the fair and headed it right back into the top oh. corner. Very similar, but oh, I've never seen a classic. I've never seen it was a, a classic goal, goal in Sandy. Yeah, Dix, no. You'd have been proud of it, wouldn't yeah, you? Well, Dixie Dean would have been proud one. of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did Harry Catrick say about that then? Afterwards, uh, he, as, as Colin said, you know, he was never one for. Um, the, very seldom did we have post mortems after mm. games. You know, we was not one for locking us in the dressing room for an awful long time. Mm. He was a Monday morning man, Joe, wasn't he? Monday you know, morning. He'd analyse the game over the weekend, yeah. and then he'd have the, the meeting on the Monday morning. Yeah. How many scousers would there be in the, in, the, in the dressing room? How many scousers in the squad? Uh, Tommy, myself, uh, Brian LeBone, Brian LeBone, Johnny. Joe, Johnny's Johnny, five. five. So there's plenty of that sort of scouse oh, humour yeah, at that yeah, stage. Then yeah. the dressing room was rocking. Brian LeBone and Gordon West, uh, head jokers, and uh, I used to go home after training. So we're laughing, you know. I mean, it was a joy. Couldn't wait to get in every day. Uh, the, the team spirit was exceptional. You know, we we all knew that, and it's hard to to envisage it these days because there's so many nationalities in the dressing room, and there's obviously a language problem. But as you say, there were five scousers in the team, and certainly all British at this stage. Mm -hmm. And the dressing room was was rocking. I think Liverpool were similar. They had five or six scouts on the team. So whether the derbies, they were ding dong, they were derbies. You know, the referee used to bring the ball on after ten minutes and say, "All right, get on with it now," because they, they would, they, it was Everton versus Liverpool, and five or six in each team, and we used to kick lumps off one another and then they could have a drink brutal. with them after. Oh yeah, it could be if brutal. You, if you weren't a scout, though, Colin. You soon became one. Yeah. yeah. You know, because in that dressing room, if you if you'd won or lost. Uh, or drawing a derby match, yeah. then the local lads, you take a lesson off the local lads, how, how they reacted, yeah. you know, a defeat, they, they'd be down in the depths. Yeah. And you, be, you became like that yourself after a couple of, of derby games. Yeah. You know, it, you became a scouser. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you only down there came from down the road anyway. Preston, didn't you? And then from northeast ah, originally. No, northeast originally. Paulie always said really? that. Paulie always said yeah. he was an adopted scouser. Yeah, you yeah, know, he, yeah. he said that once you'd yeah. worn the blue, he, he he became a scouser. Yeah. Howard, you were saying, you know, about keeping it going for all season, but I thought you had a fantastic finish to the season, didn't you? And I think Joe's already mentioned, you know, that, that win over Liverpool was 2-0. It must have, that must have been a, a sweet, sweet victory. Oh, a derby game win, yeah, of course it was, yeah. Um, going to the end of the season, when we clinched it, um, I always remember Borley, about 15 minutes to go, he says, uh, how do you feel that day? What's it like to win it? <laughs> nah. And, he, you know, he, he was just infectious and... and, and uh, it was a great feeling to be the best. Mm. Yeah, you know, you, you you proved over a period of time, full season, you, you were the best in the league. Mm. And you, you scored in that second Liverpool game, didn't you? Yes, yeah. myself and uh, Alan Whittle. Alan. Did Alan. he go and celebrate at Tommy Smith afterwards? <laughs> yes, <laughs> did ah. and scored in front of the cop. Mm. And um, but it's funny because Big Ron had been saying before, you know, that I hadn't done very well against him, which I hadn't. You know, there's, there's no disguise in that, and I. I leapt over him and Ray Clements and scored and Tommy met us on the gate on the door of his club he said uh, Big Ron said it was an own goal he headed it <laughs> <laughs> I said 
<laughs> who wants it that yeah. bad he can have it you know <laughs> what was the reaction of Liverpool fans at this time then I mean you've won it you know against Liverpool you, you know what was the reaction of the cop to what they had a reputation of being sporting but they're that sporting uh, I don't think it was as, as vicious as it, it's gone a bit, it's gone a little bit that way now, but it wasn't then because, I mean, I was an Ever Evertonian. I've, I've supported them since a kid. As Joe had, and we had obviously had Everton mates, but we also had Liverpool mates as well. And uh, they, they, uh, they realised that year that we were the best side and uh, we deserved to win it, and mm. uh, rightfully we did. Mm. So, so was it the West Brom game that you eventually clinched the title? Yes. Was that the one? The home game, yeah, yeah. yeah. So can, tell us what you remember about that. Apart from Bawley saying 15 minutes to go. Yeah, no, I think that. Um, did you think you had it won by then? Yes. You know, in your hearts? Yes. Because you're winning and winning and winning, are you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we, yeah had to, we had to win it that night, didn't we, to, to make sure it was all dust, done and dusted. And it's nice to win at home as well. Yeah, you know, it was, yeah, it. because mm. I'd seen uh, in 63, I played in one of the junior sides, and I got down to where uh, we'd kicked off early, and I managed to get to Goodison to see Roy Vernon get receiving the, the trophy at Goodison and, you know, the championship trophy, and I think, you're thinking... Wouldn't that be fantastic to, yeah. to, to get that at Goodison, you know? And seven years later, it, thereby, I'm, we went up into the main stand to get it, didn't we? And, yeah. and lucky enough, I'd scored one of my few goals that night as well to make it, uh, to, well, get one of the goals as well. So, just an unbelievable night. Mm. It, it was a special Goodison trophy. night as well. Yeah, I mean, we Goodison, up that night. Goodison still is one of the few old-fashioned arenas, you know, it goes straight up. And when Goodison's up for it, you know, you can remember games like when Howard was in charge and with Colin and... Bayern Munich, what a night that was. I was there as a fan that night and my first game when we beat Liverpool and the, the roof came off when the first goal in. And Goodison for me, okay, it, it might be biased, is still one of these stadiums, you know, the old fashioned burr pits. And when Goodison was up for I remember the West Brom game. There well, was, was nearly 60,000 people there as well. Yeah. 58,523, I think. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I said nearly 60,000. Yeah. <laughs> so. no, as I said, I haven't seen Roy Vernon get it and thinking, wouldn't it be great to do that in front of the Everton crowd? And sure enough, it, it worked out perfectly and they had the trophy there. But obviously, if we hadn't won the game, it wouldn't have got presented. But we had to go up into the uh, the director's box, which is a fair old trip up in it. And the, the, the banter and the, the atmosphere when you were going up was absolutely fantastic. And passed me dad on the way up as well. Like, so it was fantastic. Well, he picked up the trophy, didn't he? Because Labby was injured. Labby was injured, yeah. yeah but I mean... Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, all, all your family are in the stand and absolutely amazing. How did you celebrate? Can you remember? Never went home till about four o'clock, I think, yeah. We went into Liverpool. I think we did go into Liverpool, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Eddie yeah. Dom was... Uh, um, I think uh, we got out of Liverpool as well, didn't we? Later on. Later on? Yeah. I didn't. Very much later on. It's interesting. You, you could do that in those days. Yeah. You could oh, go yeah, to, but we just you went to, to a regular bar or club or whatever. We just went out and... Uh, all, we just mingled with Evertonians all night because uh, there was Eddie Dom was there, Joe Murray and all these people there, Tommy Griffin, you know, all fan, still support Everton today, I know, because I talk to them quite regular. And we would just had a drink with them that night, which, you know, probably today they couldn't even think about. And then the next day, it was uh, the races. We went to the races because oh, we the national meeting. No, it was oh, the national, national meeting. The national right. meeting was on, right. so we went to the. So it just carried. Right. It was one long party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on the Saturday, we played Sheffield Wednesday. And we were absolutely wiped out. We obviously won the championship, celebrated for two days, go there, and they clap us on the field. Uh, they had a big thing up the champions, and they murdered us. Absolutely battered. Murdered us. And we won 1 0. Johnny yeah. Morris, who's got <laughs> in the last few minutes. <laughs> I think Jack, Jack Whittam had about 4 1 on oh, West Unbelievable. And they kept I, getting clear, and we were playing through. I mean, the. The, the thing, the trainer, it was it was the start of substitutes, wasn't one, it? One sub. The, the trainer came on, you know, to show, it, and everybody sort of ran towards him. Oh, well, I, I, I pulled down straight. <laughs> yeah. I was the only legit yeah, one yeah. that wanted to run off, by Get the way. Get me off. <laughs> 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 well, you won the league by nine points, I think you, but you just missed the record points total, hadn't you, which was, was um, 67, something like that. Yeah. Did that matter? Was that relevant yeah. at all? I thought it was the record. I think, no, I think we, you just I think missed it. We drew it. Uh, Sunderland in the last, the game, last game. We had yeah. to win the last game to, to get to, to have the actual hour. To actually win the, the record out right. Yeah. Record, yeah. Yeah. Because that was, that was two, two that points. Was as well, yeah, 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 it was. Yeah. 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 We yeah. lost a point. Yeah. That was Joe's birthday at Sunderland. We all finished yeah. back at Joe's house. Yeah. Yeah. 21, was it? Yeah. 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 21. 21. He invited us all back to his house yeah. very kindly. What time did they stay till then, Joe? I can't remember. By the time we got home, I was wrecked. Yeah. Well, we bought him a tankard. 
for his birthday. Yeah. Oh, very and, jealous uh, of him. It was really, wasn't yeah. it? You know, we had to wait around for yeah. it. <laughs> but, I mean, on the team coach on the way back from Sunderland, yeah. I mean, you couldn't get a seat on the back. Yeah, well, you know, you couldn't get near the back of the coach. For crates. <laughs> <laughs> Champagne and... Uh, Jimmy Jusman's uh, brother used to organise that, didn't he? Yeah. He's, what do you want? Because Jimmy was from the North East and uh, he'd have it all piled on the back of the coach first, going back with me and off we go. Was and there you've got the world at your feet, haven't you, in many respects? I mean, it's been a fantastic, fantastic <coughs> season. Yeah. So what happened the next season that you didn't dominate in the way that people expect? Mm. I think you were 14th yeah. and then 15th and 17th. So what, what happened? Where did it go wrong? Harry Catrick said it's because we'd had too many players at uh, Mexico for the World Cup. He said that the four players had come back and suffered lapses in form. Added to that, two of us, I think, had got married. <laughs> and he was Did that affect your form? Um, I didn't think so, no. <laughs> but he was blaming the wives, wasn't oh, he? He, he, he? I think you've got a combination of things. I mean, what Joe just mentioned then, we started, pick, we picked up a few injuries which we hadn't done previous seasons. Um, I think there was the inevitable reaction to winning it, and winning it so well, and half expecting to be, for things to just pick up. Plus the fact we had the European Cup come into the equation, like which we, we, we did, very well in them until we got beaten the quarterfinals by Panathinaikos who actually and the, the final was at Wembley that year as well and I think we all had that in the back of our minds we wanted to play in the European Cup mm. and we lost a travesty we went out to Panathinaikos who we out, completely outplayed and uh, we should and they ended up getting, getting beaten the final by Ajax that season and I think it was a combination of five six seven things you could have all put mm. together that made for a bad season I mean even uh, that said we got to the semi-final of the cup as yeah, well didn't we yeah. but, in the it same week, we lost the quarter-final and the semi-final in one week. I think week. it was a disastrous week, Carl, wasn't it? You yeah. Know, it was going out the European on the away goal and then losing to Liverpool in the yeah. semi-final. I think the team died that traffic. week. I think it did. I think the team died that week. In four yeah, days. We just lost it. We lost to Panathinaikos in a game that was later proven to be the referee was uh, I think there was it was proven later oh, that the, yeah. ref the yeah, referee had doubt, yeah. been out in the casinos the night before and we, we knew at the time that it, it wasn't you felt right. That, did you? We oh, knew yeah. it wasn't yeah, right. Yeah. And well, then we came back stage. on Anfield, and we, we were we were hurting. You know, we we got back to our hotel in in Cheshire, and we were up probably into the early hours, having a couple of beers and talking things out. Few home truths told, you know, about ourselves. We we did that. We sorted it because Harry Catrick had taken ill on the plane coming home, and um, we went to the game on Saturday against Liverpool, and we were terrific. We started well. We took a one nil lead. He couldn't get the ball off us, and then Brian LeBone, of all people, pulled a hamstring. Leon Labby was never injured, mm -hmm. and then big Toshak, you know, Sandy Brown came in at, at centre half, and Sandy couldn't handle John Toshak in the air, you know, and they, they beat us 2 1. And so we'd gone out to the quarter final of the European Cup, we'd gone out to the semi final of the FA Cup, and I, I just felt that the team died in a week. Mm. And, and Harry's health, as you mentioned, that, it was in decline by now, wasn't it? Yes. 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 Mm. yes. Heart attacks later, and uh, the, the whole thing was caving in. Borley was on his way, you know, not necessarily with it within a, a close time, but the feeling was that Borley had his mind elsewhere, maybe. We all thought that Borley wanted to get to Man United at the time, and I've spoken to him since. He said, Joe, I didn't want to go. He said, I didn't want to go anywhere. He said, I, I got the, the shock in my life when Arsenal, the, Harry Catrick told me Arsenal wanted to give a record fee for me. And then we, we still couldn't believe it. We saw Borley going out the canteen and said, where are you going? I'm going to Arsenal. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. mm. he was Catrick's pet. You know, uh, Catrick loved him. And, but in the end, I think he, he didn't love him, did no, he? No, mm. and, and you picked up a few injuries eventually as the years I did, went on? I picked up uh, what I thought was a niggling groin injury. It turned out to be, I, I got a hip replacement. Well, I had a couple of hip replacements later, but that was sort of my... I was going a little bit like, I just think any number of things would hit the injuries and uh, everything else that Joe mentioned and all that. And it was, it was sad because, you know, the 69-70 the season, it, I, I honestly believe that we were there for two, three, four years and it was going to be uh, glory days for us. And hope, you know, but it, it turned out for all the reasons we have mentioned not to be. Can't take away what you achieved in that season, of course, but inevitably, Howard, people will compare the team from that season with the sides that you managed in, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And I know people will say it's difficult to compare different eras and the such type, but which side was the better? No, I don't think you can say which side was the better, Jeff. I think that um, the 69-70 side was the best that particular time, um, without a weakness. 
and the 80s side was the best by far um, and there wasn't a weakness in that side either. Mm. I mean it, it, it would be difficult to take one player out and put him in the other side and vice versa. I, I just think that they were the best at that particular time. You feel the, the same way, Joe? And the 80s. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm Obviously I wasn't a part of the 80s side. Uh, I thought that our, our 69, 70 side, it was a joy to play in and uh, I, I think it was some side. I think it would take some beating. Mm. I really did. I think it would have transformed into any era, you know, because we had such great energy and talent in midfield. And it was built on talents, don't forget. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't that we were a massively big side. We weren't small. It wasn't that we were a physical side. As I say, we could handle ourselves. But most of all, we could play. And, and I, I think it would have transformed. I've been watching Evan a long time b before, so I, I think the 69-70 side is the best side I've seen. Mm. Should Harry Catrick be mentioned in the same breath as the likes of Bill Shankly then, Colin? In that time, he, he developed two top-class sides and a, a third one that didn't do anything. You know, but obviously it, things weren't going quite right for him health-wise and everything else. But to, to actually uh, win a side in '63, win a cuff in '68, cuff final in uh, sorry '66, cuff final in '68. Um, uh, another championship with a completely different side takes some doing in whatever area you work in and I honestly believe that the fact that he, he was an intervent he didn't deal particularly well with the press has blunted his uh, image and his legend yeah. a little bit. Mm. Must have been fantastic times to be in Liverpool you must have had an absolute ball during it. <laughs> well the, the 60s was the Beatles and all that yeah. both sides and growing up in Liverpool in the 60s and being a young man there was a great time to be around. Especially if you're in a title winning side. Well, <laughs> we, 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 we. I, I think that we enjoyed our football more than the, the players will do today, I think. I think we, yeah, we, I wouldn't, I think we, I wouldn't be surprised. I think we, we enjoyed it. I mean, the thing we did, I, I always get the impression. We enjoyed training as well, didn't yeah. we? I mean, whatever they put on in training, we always enjoyed and did to the most yeah. of the best of our abilities. Now, I mean, actually, I, I don't get the impression the players really enjoy the training and the football as way that we did. I mean, I think it was a, a completely different era. I, I agree with you, but we sound like three old folks. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll do I Joe? No, we do. Mm. We do sound like... Make, we make say, that four, Joe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, but, yeah. But, but when we say that kind of stuff, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I hope they do enjoy the training because we're all told that, you know, it's the best days of your life. Then all of a sudden you turn around and you're 32, 33 with an injury or something, and you think, we used to think, what am I going to do next? Well, at the same time, you, you, you took into management uh, certain things, you know, from managers that you work with, don't you? Yeah. And other things that you don't. And I mean, our first week in pre-season training was down on the beach, yeah. up and down the sand hills, yeah. which, you, which you'd, you'd never do now. Oh. You know, I mean, you, you, we lost about half a dozen players with blisters, with pulls and whatever, up and down the sand hills yeah. from the first week. Now, that was the cat's idea. He used to park his rover on the beach and watch us going up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Well, Howard, uh, Joe, Colin, thanks very much for sharing some of the memories of what was an absolutely fantastic season. Really enjoyed it. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you, Jeff.